Welcome. To make the most of the RAMP Seek CRISPR analysis tool, we will show you how to create and manage an account. Start by setting up an IDT account. You will use this as your login to the tool. Once you set up an IDT account, you will name the lab where all your data and analysis credits will be stored. Click the Create a Lab button to give a unique name to your lab. You can invite collaborators, colleagues, and students to your analysis lab using the Send Invite button. Enter a list of colleagues and add a customized message to their invitation. Control user privileges by setting permissions for each individual. Now you may recall that the RAMPSE CRISPR analysis tool requires analysis credits. You received a code for your credits when you purchased the product. To redeem analysis credits, click the gray redeem credit button and enter your code. You can view your current balance in the top left corner or view your transaction history here. At any point, you can refresh the page to see an updated account balance. Now let's enter the RAMPSE CRISPR analysis tool. Click the blue analysis tool button. This brings you to a new login page. Enter your IDT account credentials again for security purposes. Now you are ready to start analyzing data. To make the most of the RAMPSE CRISPR analysis tool, we're gonna to show you how to upload data. To start, let's go over the supported data formats. You need demultiplex sequencing data. This is usually provided in either .fastq or .fastq.gz format. This information contains the read name, sequence, and associated quality scores of each read in the sample you sequenced. There are multiple ways to upload data to the RAMPSE CRISPR analysis tool. You can drag and drop files or upload files from a local drive or the cloud using the connector setup. Let's walk through when and how to use these different methods of upload. For smaller file sizes, drag and drop is the fastest and most convenient method. Simply navigate to the Files tab and drag all the samples into the box indicated in the interface. From here, upload will happen in parallel and will automatically pair read1 and read2 files into a sample that can be analyzed downstream within about a minute. Alternatively, you can manually pair read data into a sample by toggling the uploaded files and clicking the orange Create Sample box. For larger files or high throughput applications, the drag and drop upload method may not be fast enough. So let's look at the connector setup upload feature. Navigate to the settings page indicated as a gear icon. Here you can transfer data from local or cloud storage systems. Local connectors stream data from local data storage to the platform. Set it up by clicking the new button under local connector settings. From here, all you need to do is specify the name of your connector, the computer operating system, and the upload or download location of your data. After saving this information, you will need to download and install connector software. Once you download the installation file, follow the on-screen installation prompts. Cloud connectors stream data from a cloud storage system and can be set up by clicking the New button under the appropriate cloud service provider. From here, setup is like the local connector, but specific to the cloud provider selected. Please reference our document in the help section for specific instructions for your cloud provider. If you are analyzing data with multiple amplicons in each sample, you will need to upload two six column bed formatted files, specifying amplicon and guide coordinates in the genome of interest. These bed files contain the chromosome, start location, stop location, name, and strand of all targets being analyzed. It is important to note that guide coordinates should omit the PAM and correctly indicate strand information so that the guide is 5' prime to 3'. Prime. To upload these files, navigate to the Settings tab and scroll down to find the section titled Bed Files for Multiplex Analysis. Upload your guide RNA and amplicon bed files in the specified section using the drag and drop upload method.
To make the most of the RAMSI CRISPR analysis tool, we'll show you how to quality control check multiplex file inputs. Let's dive into what happens after you upload your bed files for multiplex analysis. Navigate to the settings page to the bed files pairs section. This is how to QC check your inputs to make sure they can successfully be used for analysis. To begin, select the orange pair bed files button. Give a unique name to the files being paired, choose the pipeline version being used, and the guide and amplicon bed files, and select the species these coordinates can be found in. This will begin to QC check the files and will take approximately 5 to 20 minutes to complete. A status message of pass, warning, or fail will appear when the pairing is complete. If a pass status appears, you are ready to start your analysis. If a warning status appears, double-click your pairing to see why the paired bed files were flagged. These bed files will still be available for analysis, but should be reviewed to ensure there are no problems with your experimental inputs. If a fail status appears, there is something wrong with your bed inputs. Please check the log and correct your files accordingly to fix these issues. That completes the process. To make the most of the RAMPC CRISPR analysis tool, we'll show you how to analyze a singleplex experiment to screen on-target guides and conditions. First, you need to select your samples. Let's navigate to the samples page. From here, you can see all samples that have FASTQ files associated with them. Select the group of samples with a single amplicon that you want to analyze. To begin, click Analyze Singleplex. From here, you can associate information and parameters with your run and individual samples. Also, you can select the version of CRISP alteration software to use for analysis. To start a run, you need to supply the information highlighted with a red box. This includes the nucleotide sequence for amplicon and guide sequences, 5' to 3', excluding the PAM. Additional parameters can be configured on a run, including the CRISPR nuclease used, the window for interrogating variants, nucleotide sequences for HDR donors used, well position information, sample name information, and whether it was a treated or untreated sample. For batch runs with a large number of samples, you will need to upload a sample sheet to provide run information. To get a template of this sample sheet, simply click the Export to CSV button. After specifying your sample information in Excel, you can save and upload this file directly into the interface. From here, we can give our run an aggregated name under which all data can be summarized. Add additional metadata and descriptions and start our run. In some cases, you may not be able to start a run and the sample information has a red box around it. This sample is failing our QC checks due to a non-nucleotide character. Please check the hover text on a parameter for acceptable inputs and correct accordingly. Once corrected, the red box should disappear and the analysis should be able to be run. To check on the status or results, navigate to the analysis page. As soon as cloud resources are partitioned to begin processing, a progress bar will appear. Analyses run in parallel and will typically take between 20 minutes and 2 hours to complete. To make the most of the RAMPC CRISPR analysis tool, we'll show you how to interpret a singleplex experiment. You have successfully run a screen of on-target guides and conditions for a singleplex experiment. Now you want to see the results. Double-click the sample of interest on the Analyses page. This will bring you to a landing page to begin interpreting the results of your experiment. From here, you will see the Target Details landing page. This will contain graphics for the target amplified that can be easily exported using the button in the top right corner. From this page, you can find the frequency of editing, repair pathways used, and frame shifting events. Additionally, you can explore the position of insertion and deletion events that occurred in the sequence sample and the size of these events. We also include a SNP graphic that shows the frequency of non-reference base changes. By navigating to the Alignment Details page, 
you could view the distribution of alleles in the sequence population using IGV. The frequency of the event and read count can easily be obtained by clicking on the event of interest and looking at the AF and FQ tags. For end users with novel graphical needs, you can use raw data to render these graphics. These can easily be downloaded by clicking on the analysis details page. From here, you can see general sample information as well as an assortment of files that can be viewed or downloaded for custom needs. To interpret and compare results of different samples within an experiment, navigate to the Aggregations tab. Here on the Target Report landing page, you can view all samples that were aggregated for summarization. Then you can easily export this information to Excel. From here, you can quickly sort and or filter experimental results as needed and render additional graphics in your software of choice. In addition, all samples can be compared to one another by clicking on the Target Details page. Here you can find the same graphics that were available for an individual sample, but now can overlay results from other relevant samples within the experiment. For screening a large number of guides under varying conditions and treatments, you can generate graphics in 96 or 384 well-plate format to find conditions that are optimal for your experimental goals quickly. To create them, specify well information for each single plex sample prior to sample analysis. Once your run is complete, under the Aggregations tab you can quickly find graphics that give frequencies of editing, repair pathway utilization, and frameshift frequency. To make the most of the RAMSI CRISPR analysis tool, we'll show you how to analyze a multiplex experiment. In this video, we will analyze samples that have multiple amplicons per sample, or multiplex samples. The most common application for multiplex CRISPR NGS is to quantify on and off target editing effects of a guide. To begin, select the desired samples and click the Analyze Multiplex button. To pair your guide and amplicon bed files, watch the video in the series titled how to quality control check multiplex file inputs. Once successfully QC'd, you may select your name, guide, amplicon, pairs, and other relevant run information such as CRISPR nuclease used, the window size for interrogating variants, nucleotide sequences for HDR donors used, sample name information, and whether it was treated or untreated. Our interface looks for red flags that could prevent your analysis from being run successfully. Here you can see I have chosen a sample name that has illegal characters in the name. After correcting this, I can then name the aggregation for this run, associate any metadata or descriptions for this experiment, and run the analysis. To check on the status or results of your analysis, navigate to the Analyses page. As soon as cloud resources are partitioned to begin processing, a progress bar will appear. Analyses typically take between 20 minutes and 2 hours. The turnaround time depends on your read depth and number of amplicon targets being quantified per sample. To make the most of the RAMSI CRISPR analysis tool, we'll show you how to interpret a multiplex experiment. When you've completed your analysis, you will land on the Target Details landing page. This will contain graphics for all targets amplified that can be toggled on or off using the table with checkboxes on the left. Also, the active display on this page can be easily exported using the button in the top right corner. From the page, you can find a range of data, including the frequency of editing, repair pathways used, and frame shifting events. Additionally, you can explore the position of insertion and deletion events that occurred in the sequence sample, and the size of these events. We also include a SNP graphic that shows the frequency of non-reference base changes. By navigating to the Alignment Details page, you can view the distribution of alleles in the sequence population using IGV. The frequency of the event and read count can easily be obtained by clicking on the event of interest and looking for the AF or FQ tags. For end users with novel graphical needs, we allow raw data to be used to render these graphics. These files can be easily downloaded by clicking on the Analysis Details page. 
From here, you can see general sample information as well as an assortment of files that can be viewed or downloaded for custom needs. To interpret and compare results of different samples within an experiment, navigate to the Aggregations tab. Here on the target report landing page, you can view all samples that were aggregated for summarization and export this information quickly to Excel. At this point, you can quickly sort and or filter experimental results as needed and render additional graphics in your software of choice. For on-off target editing experiments, this summary can be especially powerful for comparing treatment and control experiments or you can implement a statistical test that can determine significant off-target effects in the experiment. To further investigate differences between samples, navigate to the Target Details page. Here you can overlay the results of targets from different experimental samples and export these graphics using the button in the top right corner. By overlaying an example of a treated sample with its corresponding control, we can clearly see indel events that occur at the cut site reminiscent of editing activity in the treated sample with an absence of these types of events in the control. Now that you know how to analyze a multiplex experiment, check out other videos in the series to learn more about using the IDT Ramsey CRISPR analysis tool. If you have any questions, let us know. We're here to help. You can reach us at application support at idtdna.com.